we're going to see how to take the most boring transition in the world and make it something decent. So the process is taking a straight cut and adding free stock footage to make it really look nice. To start things off, let's bring in some footage and images. Here are a couple stills I'll drop in. I've got time-lapse footage of clouds. If you want that same footage, you can get it from Pixabay. The user is finding footage. It's also very important to watch this Macho Man video before any tutorial. And we've got some fireworks video footage. You can get this free from Pixabay from this user here. So what we could do is take our still images and drag them into our timeline here and make these as long as you want them to be. I'm going to drag this end over here, slide this over, make them about the same length. So I'm going to move my slider over here, hold on alt and scroll wheel up to zoom in. Now, what I want to do is once I get my timing right, I'm going to click this to put a marker at the spot where the transition takes place. So right now we got the most boring straight cut transition. And what I'm going to do is click and drag my cloud footage here and find a spot that looks good. I think anywhere will work. I'm going to hit the B button on the keyboard for my blade tool and press A to get the regular move tool. And I'm going to press backspace. Now I'm going to trim this a little bit here, a little bit here. Okay, that should be enough time, but just in case, I'll give it a little bit more. And I'm also going to drag the fireworks footage. So let's click and drag this in here and put it on top. This fireworks footage has audio, which I don't want. So I'm going to right click on it, uncheck link clips. And now I could select just the audio and press backspace. I want this to be at a very specific spot where I see an explosion towards the middle of the screen. So I'm going to move this over. All right, somewhere around here where I see parts falling down and glowing. I think that's a good spot. Let's trim this. Click and drag this over, press B, click that, press A, and hit backspace to delete that part. All right, so now we just got a bunch of stuff on top of each other. So let's see how we can make it more interesting. I'm going to select everything, right click on it, go up to new fusion clip, and you see it puts it all in one. And now we could click our fusion button down here to jump into fusion organize. So we do that by naming things. I'm going to click this node and press one to preview it on the left. Okay. So this is our shoes. So with this node selected, press F2, click this one, press one, press F2 to rename it. We kind of know what this one's going to be. So press F2. If we preview media out over here, we see as we play this, we got shoes, the fireworks. So we know the fireworks are the top layer. So let's put this at the top, put the shoes down below. And as I scrub through here in the parts where we just see the shoe, you'll also notice that our image here doesn't cover the whole background. So let's add a background here. Click and drag on my background output to output and we've got a merge here and I'm going to move this because I want some decent separation between these three parts here. All right, let's click on this merge and press one to preview it. The background is on top. I'm going to click the merge and press control T and flips that with this background selected. Let's click and hold the eyedropper tool and sample the color of the image. All right. So now everything is matching there. Also, we're zoomed out a little bit far on the shoe. So let's press shift and space bar. I have no node selected. So we got this transform, press enter, and I'm going to hold down shift as I drag this over this line here, clicking on my transform, I'm going to press one to preview it. I'm going to drag the size up here. I don't want to look at this fireworks just yet. So I'm going to click on this, turn this off here. And now I just see the clouds. Let's click on our merge for the clouds. I'm going to set this to lighten. All right. So now what I want to do is adjust the colors a bit here. So I'm going to move this over and we're getting bunched up here. So let's move this down in my clouds. I want color curves. Click and drag color curves here and holding down shift, drop it on, turn off blue, alpha, green. And we just got red here. And as we move this slider, we're going to get different colors, something like that. I could take this handle. I'm going to try out the green and I'm going to move this top part here. And this is something I don't want. I don't want it to be so bright. It's seeping through there. So I got to be careful with that. Dial this back a bit here. Maybe even go in the opposite direction. Go to blue, make some adjustments there. I like those colors. We could adjust the alpha also if we want. As long as we don't get stuff showing up in the background, we're in good shape. I want to add a transform in here. I know I've got one already, so I'm just going to borrow that. Control C to copy it. 
click off everything, press control V. I'm actually going to hit this button here to reset the settings before I place it in here. Hold down shift, drag it over this line. Let's test it out by adjusting the size. I want to have this scaling up right at the spot where the shoe changes, maybe even a couple frames before. So at this point for the transform, I'm going to hit the keyframe and bring the size to zero. I'm going to move ahead a bit, set the size to one. And I want to preview that. So I'm going to hold down control and drag. And that gives me a work area from here to here. And I can preview that. So I got a rough idea. Okay, grab the transform, hit my spline button here and go to size, frame it up with this little button here. And I'm gonna select this keyframe, press F to make it flat. Take this keyframe, drag its handle up. I want this to happen fast with some ease into the second keyframe. So now if you watch this frame by frame, you're gonna see parts with a hard edge here that might not look great. If you wanna avoid that, you can create a mask, but this is moving so fast. I think it's fine to just leave it there. I'm gonna close my spline window for now and zoom out a bit here. So I could turn my fireworks on now. So let's click this and turn it on. Let's select the merge and find apply mode. I'm gonna leave this as screen. Now we see this too soon. So what we could do is select its merge and animate the blend. So I'm gonna set it to zero and let's find, okay, so right about here, we'll hit our keyframe, move forwards a bit about here, set this blend up and then we want it to fade out. Okay, so our clips are just ending here. So we want it to blend back to zero. And I want to do the same thing with the cloud because I don't want it to just end abruptly like that. Let's grab this merge for our clouds. All right, right about here, we'll turn our blend down, go forwards a few frames, bring it up to 100 to the end where we don't see it anymore, about there, down. All right, and if we look closely, we could see some of the fireworks going outside of the image, but that's fine. We also, we could see that if we were working on a dark background, these apply modes wouldn't work as well, but because we're working on a white background, uh, this works really well. Another thing we could have done is mask these shoes out, but this is just a quick way to add some spice to a very simple transition. Let's jump back here into the edit tab. Okay, so we've gone from the most boring basic transition into the world to something decent. I actually like that the transition effect happens pretty fast like that. If you want, you could change the timing. If you right click on this fusion clip, you can go to open in timeline. And now you've got your original timeline back. You can make these longer or adjust the duration and the timing of your shoe footage. And when you're good there, you can double click on timeline one to get back to this place. And don't forget to add a sound effect right here to make it really pop.